Hello everyone, welcome back to Fantasy Forge. I'm Cameron Holt, and I hope you're doing well. Now, we're gonna do something a little bit different this time again, but don't worry, there's no need to unsubscribe. The Pokemon Fusions will be back very soon. In fact, if you're watching and you're not subscribed, So, I've been running Waterdeep Dragon Heist for a very close family bubble of mine, and they've drawn the attention of a not-so-sympathetic ball of eyes. You know him as Xanathar. The session is in two days, and I don't really have the time or funds to order a Beholder Mini, so I'm gonna make one, and I'm gonna show you how to make one too. All you're gonna need is some Sculpey, aluminum wire, foil, some paints, and a dowel rod. Without further ado, let's make a beholder. Step one, carefully tear and ball up the foil armature for the main body of the beholder. Then, realize that you should have just used the whole sheet. Get even more foil to finally get the ball to the size that's just a bit smaller than what your final piece should be. I'm just eyeballing it, pun intended but it managed to come out to just the right size for our 28mm minis. Step 2. Take the back end of a sculpting tool, pen, or in my case, a paintbrush, and jab it into the foil ball to create the depressions for the main eye and mouth. Don't be afraid to get a little rough with it, but don't hurt yourself. In the end, it should look something like this. Step 3. I'm using this set of fancy dental tools to help me out with sculpting, but you can achieve the same effects in this project simply with the use of a toothpick or a popsicle stick. I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut some clay from the block of Sculpey, but you can also just as easily tear off a chunk like a barbarian. Work the clay in your hands to soften it up for use, then form it into a small disc shape. Safety first. Don't forget to cap your sharp friends. Step 4. Using a tool of your choice, flatten out the disc into a more uniform thickness. Then, we're ready to apply the beholder's skin. Gently coax the clay into the divots you made earlier in the foil. Then wrap it around and seal the crease with your fingers. Step 5. Make a little worm of clay and attach it around the mouth hole. This is one of those juicy Xanathar lips. Then, make two similar shapes and cram them in the mouth as gums. You can smooth these ones on the inside, but make sure there's a visible crease so that they don't look like part of the lips. They're not that juicy. Next, make one more worm of clay and lay it across the top gum. Smooth out the top and boom! Top lip accomplished. You're doing great! Step 6. Make a ball of clay. I bet you can guess where this is going. But, I'll tell you anyway. It's the classic magic-canceling eye. Once it's nice and round, stick it in the eye hole and move on to the next step. Step 7. Repeat the process you use to make the lips, but this time we're making eyelids. Be sure not to enclose the eyeball too much, or you'll have a sleepy beholder on your hands. Unless that's what you're going for. You do you. Step 8. Now you can go in with an explorer tool like I am, or a toothpick if that's what you've got, and do some detailing around the eyes and mouth. Just carving in some lines where the scaly skin would fold in this expression. Don't be afraid to use reference photos, it's totally allowed. Step 9. My beholder's head was lacking a bit, so I went in and added some mass to the top where the eye stalks will be. You may not need to do this step, but I definitely did. Step 10. Watch in amazement as your aluminum wire unravels itself on the spool. Then, cut off some 2 to 2.5 inch wires. 
These will be the armature for the eye stalks. Don't forget to make 10. Step 11. This is another optional step, but I like to file down the ends of the wires so they aren't so sharp. Again, not super necessary, but I like things to not cut me if I can help it. Step 12. It's time to bend some wires. You can do this in any fashion that you'd like, but try not to make them too uniform, unless that's what you want to do. If you do that on accident and it wasn't what you were going for, just lie and say it was. No one will ever know. Once bent, you can go ahead and cram those wires right into Xanathar's head. Step 13. Admire your handiwork. The end is in sight. Make some more little clay worms, then make a slit down the middle. Open up the slit, then fasten it around the eye stock wire of your choice. Then, do that same thing nine more times. Look how hideous he is! You're doing it! Step 14. Next up, we're gonna make some tiny little sharp worms. These will be the teeth. Make more than you think you need so you have some options to choose from. We're gonna bake these first so they'll be nice and solid for the next step. Step 15. Gently pour out your freshly baked teeth. Then, take one of those bad boys and cram it right into old Zanny's gob. Just stick it right in there. Then do that a bunch more times. Beautiful. Step 16. Make all the eye stock eyeballs. Again, you'll need 10 of these. In hindsight, I probably should have baked these first as well and made some eyelids around them, but time was ticking down to the session and I needed to get a move on. Now's a good time to prep your dowel rod, which will connect Xanathar to his base, which we'll get to soon. Step 17. It's time for detail. Use your tools of choice and call upon your artist's patience to go in and outline individual scales around the eye, mouth, and face of the beholder. Then, give up on that noise and texture the rest with a small bit of crumpled up aluminum foil. It's super effective. Step 18. Take your dowel rod and just shove it right up into the beholder's uh, lower portion. This is important so you have a place to connect it once our boy is baked. Now he's ready for the oven. Toss that sucker in at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes, then it's time to paint. Step 19. Paint! Obviously, you can use whatever colors you desire, but since I'm making Xanathar, I went with blue scales, tan face, orange eye stock eyes, and golden pupils. I also did a black wash, but I recommend using a base coat of Mod Podge first if you want to do that. I didn't, and my initial layer peeled a bit during the wash process. Step 20. Finally, make a base. 
I measured out a roughly two inch diameter circle of Sculpey, made some tile lines and textured with foil. Then I baked that bad boy and painted it the same way I paint my dungeon tiles, which you can see by following the link right here. Lastly, attach Xanathar to the base with the dowel rod and your adhesive of choice, I used hot glue, and you've done it! Your very own handcrafted Xanathar mini that you can use to torment and murder your players. Or rule over them if they're members of the guild. The choice is yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe to Fantasy Forge for more D&D and tabletop RPG content of all kinds. I'll see all of you in the next video, but until then, stay safe out there, adventurers.